So from my perspective, coming from the Swedish Fire Service, and every time you do a, like a view of your perspective, you're simplifying or taking shortcuts in why things happening and maybe something is sometimes it's not correct and so on. But when I, when I like recap on what what my background was, that, that what I was taught is just gas cooling. You have to do it with a fog because uh, you have to have small droplets. Otherwise, it's not. Sweden doesn't have the difference between effective and efficient. Sure. It's the same word. So, but it said it wasn't efficient. Maybe, I don't know, the instructor that was teaching me or we said after meant effective. I don't know. But at least I know that they said it wasn't efficient, which yeah. I would say is supported by science. If you want to do gas cooling, you want to have small droplets, it's make it more efficient. That's, I would say, undeniable. Sure. If you get the droplets in the right place. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I can remember coming back, coming here in 08. And then the statement was essentially like any water that hits the floor is wasteful and we don't want to be wasteful. Yeah. And it's like, I, and, it, and, yeah, I, and okay. I think efficiency is, I think efficiency is po- important. It's not more inf- important than effectiveness. Sure. You have to be effective. Otherwise it's that. And I think that's where a big part and we lost. Like, like if I say that I, I have put, uh, there's other things to it, like stirring everything around and all this air entrainment. Let it just for, from droplet perspective, I, I was taught putting f- small droplets in there. I was taught that if you put a straight stream through the ceiling, it's useless because the droplets that are created by putting it in the ceiling are so big that it won't do anything. Which I like, that was the thing I was struggling with when I came to America, where like that was that was my bias. I was, I was super convinced out of it. I really believe science. And people go, go on to me like, well, that's not our, our experience. Well, our sure. experience is that when you move through that hallway and you got flames rolling over you, you start whipping that stream around, it just goes out. Well, and what I was and, taught. Like, was you want big ugly droplets because big ugly droplets penetrate far and why would you want to cool here when i can cool there yeah so it's different schools of thought right and i i don't know that if we look at it from an efficiency perspective i mean i've been on fire grounds where you could row a boat out of (laughs) where you just came from now now most of that was not making your way to the fire and your initial knockdown it was we suck at being efficient during mop up overhaul yeah it's like all right i i've got 150 gallons a minute i've got 600 liters and i've got a little bit of smoke in the (laughs) cushion on the corner and you blast it until it stopped smoking versus we're coming at opposite ends of the problem, right? Is that we, we're not good at dialing down and you guys have limited capability of dialing up. Oh, absolutely. So what it, what is the, I mean, I think if we went with the small room house fire, um, I, I believe that if we were going off of effective effectiveness and efficiency, and we were doing that off of knocking the fire down in the least amount of time using the least amount of water, I think low pressure, high flow would win every time. Or um, high pressure, low flow yeah. would win every time. Because it's, uh, I mean, we talk about critical flow rates. Yeah. And I often have people say, well, we should look at the critical flow rate. And people in the US saying that. And knowing that those same people like smooth bores and and 180 gallon print it flows and it's like you don't want to know the critical flow rate because it's probably somewhere way between a garden hose yeah. and a high pressure hose reel yeah. somewhere in there if we truly wanted to find out i mean if you've got i mean if we had fire coming out of that window right there and you've got that one room on fire I mean, if we control the air, so there is literally no air in that hallway to the doorway we're going in, which means that fire is not moving in that direction at all. And you've got gear that is fluffed up and has no energy in it and it's ready to go. You could get to that room with no water whatsoever. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't need to flow any. It's all those variables and unknowns that happen that 
justify one or the other. Well, I think it's also about like value. Like how do you, like when you say, when we use the word like optimum. Sure. If you say that, well, I don't care about water damages. I don't care about, for instance, maybe a, a secondary problem, pollution of the groundwater source or something sure. like that. If I don't sure. care about that, if, 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 if I only am concerned about killing that fire. Sure. Uh, using more water w would, uh, I mean, there's no downside besides like bigger host line takes more manpower, uh, usually take more manpower or a lot more training. Sure. But it takes more resources in that sense. Uh, or you need maybe a bigger, you need to connect to hydrant instead of going from tank water. So there are penalties for going with big water besides like water damages. But if you are like a resource strong organization, you have a lot of engines, you have a lot of manpower, it doesn't really matter. You have yeah. that personnel. So if you're used to that and you're good at it, yeah. then those things begin to go away. Yeah, you just crush yeah. it. So, yeah. And that's like a value step. And I can't really argue about that. If you don't care about water damage, you, you don't. Like, But what I am interested in, like, like, I can take an example, like for going back to Swedish Fire Service, again, we we're really bad at that. Like if we, we, if we go to, instead of a, uh, old modern old typical swedish house which would compartmentalize small small apartments i mean we're going the same trend as the united states not as not as extreme but but we're also i mean it's just open floor plans and my house is and we talk about an average house my house would be the same same size as that one mm -hmm. uh, uh again unusual to have like a great room with two floors that yeah. would be unusual in sweden yeah. It's very common in the United States. Like yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's more and more common for yeah, sure. You go yeah. straight up and so on. So, so there are big volumes. But even if I go to Swedish volume, which is big, like I can't throw those droplets effectively on to the other side of, of, of my my living room. Sure. It's, there's not, not reach, especially not if you've got a flow coming at me. That, I'm, I'm not getting half the distance. Sure. And Swedish fires, are, fires to this date are not learning how to identify that as a problem. And, and dealing with it. So what's what's the answer in that case? I mean, can can you gas cool your way out of that, or you you long pulse, or you go straight stream? You lo you long well, it's Swedish cool. I mean, local tradition. You you just long pulse, and if it doesn't work, you just back out. Like there, there's, yeah. it's not taught like like an eternally option. I mean, yeah. sure, it might be in some location, and I try to like force it in that direction. But sure. if I'm being gigantic, it's been like well, the panacea of. of if you just get a little bit of water in. and then we of course back out and do fog nail and curtains and, and other stuff stuff to deal with that problem but sure. to go back to stream shapes there hasn't been a, 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 a going back to master sand and geese or they didn't have that problem so it wasn't the problem but now it sure. may, maybe is but going back then when i talk talk about the other the other side of the coin when i, when I read case studies from the united states i read and there's multiple and what I think that that's one of the problems, but one of them is, it's like, it's like a, I think it's in Phoenix, there's an, there's a kitchen, there's an attic fire. They move in a small single residential house, small house, we're talking 50s and 60s, mm -hmm. post area house. Yeah, small ranch uh, house. Yeah. yeah, and they come in, pull ceiling, and basically they pull the fire down to them, which is another problem. But anyway, the two firefighters in there, um, Basically, it becomes no visibility. Uh, they can't find each other. There's some communication problems, and the firefighter with the host line is getting hotter and hotter and start flowing water. Uh, but he can't leave because the other firefighter, he can't find the other firefighter. Um, but the interesting thing is you have here is, and again, I see this, this in many different case studies, he's, he's flowing water. Like an ancient tree quarter host line, straight stream, whipping it in the ceiling. And he's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. He sees like glow and through the smoke, like it's getting hot. He's burning his hand. He can't hold the nozzle right because he's burning his hand, like he's melting gear. And eventually they move out and everything is okay. They find each other. Um, but to me, it's probably there. Like if I have a fog, I have cooling fairly close to myself. But if I have a straight stream, it doesn't really matter if I whip it around. Probably a little bit, I would describe it because it just breaks down when you whip it around some dark droplets sure but a majority of cooling happens when it breaks down in the in the, in the ceiling and it cool and it probably cooled that attic really nicely through those hose hole they pulled down but there wasn't pretty much any cooling done in the in down the, where the he kitchen. was clearly they were not comfortable no. yeah. so i so i cannot have just as well as i would like go to the extreme in the swedish example like where you would never ever go from a from a fog to a straight stream and whip it around against the surface and break it up I go to the other the extreme where you'd never want to do that. And I go like both those way of approaching it would have like a, a hole in it where you identify as a problem. 
like, like another thing with straight stream, if I can imagine you have these false ceilings with the plates. Yeah. Like we have a big installation space. If you start yeah. whipping around that straight stream in there, where's the water ending up? Well, sure. up in this false ceiling, is, is that where you want the cooling happen? Maybe not. Probably, like, yeah. like, like in my head, I can like mentally see like, the, the, sure. It might be problems there also. Well, and I think the other piece that we got a little glimpse of in the, a better appreciation for in the fire attack study that poses another question to me is, all right, so if I go ahead and direct my stream off the ceiling, even if it is a straight stream, yeah. it's going to ride that surface oh, to well, yeah. all of yeah. the walls, in which case, how do you decouple a thin sheet of moisture on all of the walls from a cooling perspective? Because it's like, even when the droplets come down, you now wet every surface in that room very quickly. Um, I mean, when we, when we threw a little bit of water up off the ceiling and then shut it down and moved on, we saw that essentially that cooling went away yeah, it came back very, very yeah. quickly. Because uh, the flow carried the gases away and new gases New, new, new gases are on. there. And if and, you do gore control, maybe it's better, but it's still a circulation going on. So it would still be a very sure. short period of time. And, and that's where I struggle with the, with the short pulses and, yeah. the, and the smoke cooling is that how, how quickly is that replaced and how often do you need to cool and we know way, in way certain more often circumstances than most you, Europeans would think maybe yeah and well, and I think we hear store I mean you and I could both agree on a scenario where you don't have to smoke cool at all oh yeah absolutely so I get caught up between the the don't have to do it at all and the can't make it so it's like both ends of the spectrum of can't cool enough and didn't need to cool at all and could we create an environment where we could look at both ends of that spectrum and see what your tools under optimal operator yeah. conditions, what it really does and what the benefits and limitations are? I think that would be, I mean, if we were to study European tactics, that would be one spot that I would like to try and, and start. Well, um, absolutely, and I, I, would, I would love you for you to do that. Um, because it is not, a lot of this is based on theory. I think the theory is sound, but put in practice, there are many problems. Yeah. Like it's been taught in Sweden and many places, like where if you don't, if, like if door control, because the concepts are rarely taught together. Sure. Like they talked isolated. Absolutely. Like you talk gas cooling here, and then you talk like door that's, controlled here. That's why we're doing a coordinated attack project right <laughs> yeah, now. It's like, yeah. all right, we looked at ventilation, we looked at suppression, we looked at this, we looked at that. All right, now let's start layering them and uh you get a whole bunch of versions of really good oh, this. yeah and i mean I, we, we know that there's many ways to skin a cat that's going to be fairly good like but sure. if you want to quantify things like like for instance gas cooling and you don't do like i would say many like cfpt courses never teach us that door control is a is a vital part of gas cooling because you slow the slow the rate of exchange of gases down and that expands how long the duration is so you can't pulse go forward a meter pulse again go forward a meter and go but isn't that part of like the door entry procedure yeah but a lot of times it's decoupled with actually maintaining door control when you so once in. you go through it once you go through it it's, it's, it's open. open and a lot of times it might be mentioned in theory but it's one of those things and it depends on where you go to the class and everything but sure. like well it typically it requires a person right yeah which is not person. a That's what commodity that you have no, a lot no, of no. yeah like Sweden has the door person, it stays there. But even yep. Sweden like forgot about it because why is this guy always sitting by the door? He can bring a tool or he can yeah. write on a board. Like even Sweden, who had a designated person, right. kind of went gave like, him other tasks. Yeah, yeah. because in ninety percent of the time, it doesn't really matter. Sure, you you're overpowered to fire and shoot out. Mm -hmm. But those ten percent, and so so even even then, it's a, it's a, it's a problem. But I think that what I'd like to know, it's like when I talk about. Like again, I, when you talk about quantifying, I would like to know how fast does it come back generically, like a house fire with the door closed, with the door open. Like, how fast do we have to reapply for those three meters ahead of us to stay non combustible? Sure. Uh, and the same, of course, goes for cooling the surfaces. Or if you do, of course, combination, which I, if I teach now, 
when I talk about stream place, I, I really treat, t teach, try to teach both, like both methods, because I, I see sure. them as both vital. I see if you want to be efficient, you need to use fog in some sense, but you don't have the reach and you don't have the surface cooling uh, for a lot of situations that you need to like switch between them. Right. And which is hard also because in reality you don't see anything, so you need to work very integrated with a tick. Like for sure, two two persons, one helping with the tick, helping you to aim, and so on. So it's very like if you want to be efficient in the sense that what I, what a Swedish fire service is like, if there's water on the floor, you failed, kind of like that. Sure. Like which is which sets a higher standard of of that aspect of firefighting. Sure. And, and I think our use of tick too has made things much more efficient, even though it's overpowering. In many cases, at least it's directed in the right direction. Yeah, and well, certainly yeah. if you see burning fuels, yeah, they, they get knocked yeah. down from, I mean, the reach of our stream is like 30 meters. So it's oh, like, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, it's, you, you can clearly of, hit the other side of a house. One of the things I don't really line understand sight, with, you know, one of the things I don't understand with the straight stream versus smooth bore is like, what's well, got a better reach? Cause like how, how big houses do you have? Like, well, I, I think that <laughs> argument's gone away. Oh, it's because uh, you're not on social media. You reach it all the time. Reach well, for, and penetration also. Well, like, that's, uh, that's the I mean the other piece of the puzzle. But I think uh, uh, combination nozzle manufacturers have done a good job at taking away every argument that that has come up. So they've yeah. optimized like their technology shape, shape, so that it reaches, reaches the, same the same length as a smoothbore yeah. but by the time it gets there it might be a little more broken up or it's it can't penetrate as well um, but like you said i mean and this is one of the tactical considerations in in our and discussion in one of our training programs is if the longest dimension in a house let's say is is 10 meters and your stream reaches 30 then what's happening to that other 20 meters of potential is and essentially you're whacking the crap out of <laughs> something and and the the amount of energy you have to have between those two surfaces and the nozzle would be like the sun <laughs> <laughs> which is why everything everything we talk about technique and everything else but the reality is uh, uh there was a lot of conversation in the stream project about about floor sweeping yeah so essentially we're in a hallway and we're going in an upside down u pattern that the stream itself is not touching at the bottom. However, you can visibly see like a several centimeter puddle of water going down the hallway. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, do I, ha do I have to connect when in fact it's already flooded? So yeah. if you're trying to cool, then no. I mean, if you're trying to get a sense of structural stability or you're trying to sweep something away, then yeah, maybe you do want to complete that whip at the bottom. Um, but as far as like you didn't get water there and it's like well we didn't directly put it there but it all went <laughs> it there, there right? yeah well what i've heard is like they go to the it's like well if there's like needles if there's like uh different kinds of, of debris sweeping for holes in the ground and i don't take away those i mean I, if, if you're in an area where you like needles like yeah that's a needle, problem uh, then, yeah, yeah. You go ahead um, so I said, I don't take away those things. I just go like, there's always a trade-off. And to me, it would trade off sure. for sweeping the floor would be like, of course, water damage. So again, it goes back to my context. And I, and I don't really like, this is like a saying like, uh, everything dries, but nothing unburns. Sure. Which is just totally not true. Most of the things that get wet, get destroyed, and you can't, you have to replace it. Like, if, if I get my family photo album, like in water, it's destroyed. Well, not destroyed, but... It'd be it, better than if it burned up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but then, you, like, you put them to the side, like... Yeah, well, it's not if, pristine if it, versus not pristine. No, I mean, it's, yeah. it's like, you go like, well, yeah, I'd rather take just a little bit of smoke damages. For sure. It's well, not we, like black and white there. It's, it's a never, never is. But, uh, never is. But going back, I, I, one thing, we talked about the, the wedding surfaces. That's also one of the questions I have. Because I, if I, like, like t take my magic wand, Wand here, and I'll say I'll use a straight stream. Now I'll paint the surfaces here, and let's say it doesn't create any droplets. Let's say it just flows 
perfectly over surfaces. There's no, it's like a smooth surface. It's a no perfect no, thin film. Yes, of it's a perfect thin water. Thin, just water pouring down the surfaces. And, yeah. and then I have, like, like in a hallway, and then I have a fire over there and it comes out. Like, without a doubt, of course, it's going to be cool. But because all the radiation coming from those gases is just going to hit the walls and pretty much nothing coming back because it's going to absorb that radiation. Sure. So, of course, it's going to cool. Of course, quantifiably, how much, I don't know. Sure. But if I take, like, if I take metal, like that's also highly conductive. Like if I take a metal container, it's no problem to create. If I get a big fuel load and I let it out in container, when it's cold, it's gonna the flames is not gonna reach as much because yeah, because it's cooled by the by the surface. Conservation but, of energy. But if I get a big fire, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna r rush through that container, just pour out because sure. the momentum of yeah, the gases. Yeah, the yeah, surfaces are not big enough. Surface area is not big enough to effectively cool it down. So I go like if. Because I had this discussion with your other uh, UL pals uh, and many other people, uh, like I understand, like surface cooling of the walls inside there. Um, taking aside, of course, if it's if it's burning, it's paralyzing, of course, then it's really good. But I go like, how big is that effect compared to the actual the droplets that are created? Sure. And I would just I would just assume that the majority of the effect is still like the rapid effect you see, like you knock down flames, so, like you push flames back that would come from the actual droplets going through because the, the amount of surface area is so much bigger than the, the cold surfaces. See, I would say that too, but if you look at the transitional attack experiments yeah. in fire attacks, you've got, you've got a room on fire, vent limited, out the window, and then Keith applies, use the combination nozzle, straight stream, yeah. 150 gallons a minute, off the ceiling. And we know that that water is not going right down and hitting well, the bed. You know that most of the water surface, like even 95% of the water is close to that. But you, you there, also there is it. a mist of water going into the middle of the room, not the big droplets. But how, how much, it's just gases. How much water do you actually need? The, the amount of water you need is so We use small. way more than we need. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not talking about efficiency. I'm talking about the actual mechanism by which the fire gets knocked down. So that that straight slug of water goes up, hits the ceiling. We know from our water mopping experiments that essentially it coats all of the walls and little droplets get created yeah. in the middle. It's almost like a mist yeah. in, in the middle of which I would expect that that would get chewed up by the energy of the fire pretty quickly. But that fire, both sides pull in very rapidly and that fire gets knocked down and it goes to burning contents. So all the burning gases go away. A little, some steam comes back out the window, but that fire is mostly knocked down. And I know that none of those big droplets or very few of those big droplets came down onto the bed that's taking up most of the middle of the room. Yeah, but I, I would, I, yeah, and I, I pretty much agree with everything you said, but, uh, but I, I, would, I would frame it like this. If, if you get that amount of water in the surface, it's sure you cool the surface, and that's why it doesn't come back, because it's the radiation from all the walls and all the pyrolyzing that makes the gases come back. But I would say what, what actually makes the gases go away, oh, you cool down the gases, would be those small droplets just coming. I think that's, that's enough, because if you look at, if you look at the, well, both doing the math and everything, the, sure. to cool the gases down, it's just tremendously small amount of water. But, but the problem, of course, is all the hard surfaces where the mass is saturated with heat. So the surfaces, if you don't cool the surface, it's just boom, it just goes straight into. And you have new hot gases and you have new fire. So, like, it, it may be, it's semantics in the sense that I, it, it, I just say that, what cools the gases if that is the question yeah that i i still think that that it's, is the, 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 the small droplets it's the same mechanism right it's it's area of surface of water yeah coming in contact with hot gases yeah and whether it's in the form of a thin sheet spread through the room or tiny droplets sprinkled through the room Ultimately, doesn't it come down to surface area touching oh, total, hot gases? Total. But yeah. I think about what the problem is. What 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 that thing is that done for for me in my head again was, I had to reinforce how important it is to cool the surfaces uh, 
of course, I understand for, for stopping paralysis, but for but for maintaining low temperature on gases straight afterwards, because that's what's happened with gas cooling when you're moving down the hallway. Sure. Boom, you cool the gases. It takes very small amounts of water, anything else, but as soon as you stop that spray, sure. it re Re, uh, uh, it reheats the gases. Also, sure. that you feed new gases in from the fire because it's coming from there. I mean, that's but what would be just, great to know. I mean, it's like, it, so you've got the hallway model in your mind. You're going down a hallway, you're yeah, going through a room one, to get yeah, to another yeah. room on fire. And if we were to treat that as a constant source of hot gases yeah. coming at you like a conveyor belt, yeah. could you dial up a droplet size and flow rate so zero water was hitting a surface it was all being used in that hot gas layer and you optimally cooled that gas layer so no hot gases went past you like could you balance absolutely those not impractical things? but in theory you could in theory you and, could and you could also i mean i can i can tell you like old stories when the you know the guy going back to master sand or everything they do and i got some great videos of like showing the, like when they did house fires they they had like the really the, the super short, short ones sure. that were developed in containers, but they used it. But they ran in. Basically, they run in. Sure. So that you, you'd ch -ch 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 -ch, really fine water droplets. They only survived like a meter in front of you. Sure. But when you ran in, like really walked really fast, not sure. just crawling, every new pulse just ate up a little bit longer for it. Sure. And you could have like a whole. You could show you videos. It's just. It's just, it's I stupid. think I saw some of them. Yeah, like they're <laughs> stupid, little, yeah, super stupid. But it's still, it's still, it's still interesting. Yeah, uh, and then you, you, you just go run in, go ch -ch 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 -ch, and you go in, and it's just such small waters. But that that requires a, a tactic or a, like a way of technique of doing it is actually running in, which I, nobody can support for a number of reasons. Sure, but so let's let's do... say you were going to run in. Yeah. Instead of doing, ch -ch 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 -ch, why not go? Ch -ch 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 and just I think it, have it, it is a in difference. front of you. We're getting into difference of mixing. I mean, one of the reasons for the short pulse is because if you do it, look at short pulse, you get a s small stirring of smoke. Like it's sure. very small. But as soon as you start flowing for like a second or two seconds, then you seconds, start stirring a lot you're more. Then you get that air pump is moving. So like, well, Which explains why air entrainment is not that important to you if you're doing those really short pulses. Well, that ha ultimately, that doesn't happen at all. You're avoiding yeah. all air entrainment, yeah. whereas for us, when it's open oh, it's and flowing, it's amount. a ton of, yeah. of air coming. Which may or may not be a problem. If you're sitting out, you know, in a room where there, you, the, the door control behind you, you do flowing water, what you're doing is you're mixing everything, which is good because you're mixing anything because you're mixing cooling capacity everywhere. You're sure. basically, if you flow water here, you're sucking hot air from here and just making it non-combustible. But the penalty, of course, is just everything is up there in terms of toxic, to toxicity and everything comes down here. So visibility is shit. Sure, but if, if you, you had probably, any to you begin probably, with. probably don't have it at all. Yeah. So most of the time I see it as a non-issue. Sure. Where it truly becomes an issue is if you take something like from behind you do a transition attack where you take the oxygen actually and pushes that in. Sure. Now you get not just a more mass in there which creates a pressure but you also get new oxygen. It's not recirculating air, it's getting new stuff in. As long as if it overwhelms your contraction by your cooling. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and I mean, it's, so, so the, and those things were like things that I think that, at least for me, like also fine tuned how I teach nozzle streams for sure. Sure. Like I never, I, before I started thinking about air entrainment, which is really taught to me as like a non-issue and in a lot of cases are, but now we talk a lot about transitional attack, like from the outside, but for European perspective, doing gas cooling from the inside, it's the same if you pass an interior door. Which has never been taught. If you start flowing through the, through like a hallway and you do a do a or whip the stream around, doesn't really matter. If you if you're moving air with a straight stream moving around or a gas, you're 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 pressurizing the room in front of you unless you have an opposite vent point. Sure. You're pressurizing that, and that's going to come back to you at all. But it's not talked about it in that sense because you, you know when you're inside you can't really see it. Sure. So that nobody sees it, it never happens. Sure. No, it's, <laughs> but it's yeah. the same thing. So you're, and I, and I can like picture myself in my head. And a lot of times I've been to fires or, or trainings where I know I've created a worse environment for myself just because I did, did for instance, a long pulse in a hallway towards a door opening. And, and I, I for sure, I'm starting to be Canadian. 
for sure. <laughs> Damn you Canadians. Uh, uh, been pressurizing that room and, and in return getting a lot of that stuff coming back at me, which is also a lot of steam in that case if, if, if I actually do some, some good with my stream and cooling it down. Sure. And that's where you go like, well, in that case, if I have a hallway, a lot of times I would like to have a straight stream because I want the reach and I want, don't want to have, an os- if I don't have an opposite vent point. Yeah. I probably want a straight stream and have cooling. I want the, the, the droplets to be further ahead of me. But when I make that left turn into the fire compartment, and first I probably want to have a, a, a short burst of, 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 of fog to just cool the gases down, get a little bit of contraction. And then, I, and then I, I'll, I'll paint, the, paint the surfaces to make them cool and cool down. Sure. Well, and I think that's where, I mean, we start talking about this surgically, is that, especially if you've got a room, say you got a room ahead of you or you got a room off to the side, you're gas cooling, gas cooling, gas cooling, and you're literally putting yourself in the opening of the room yeah. to finish, yeah. to, to paint it off. With the, with the straight stream, and if you're doing an O down the hallway, the moment you begin to gain line of sight into that room, you're beginning to put the fire out by putting water on burning surfaces. And in yeah, our case, turn. that yeah. was like six, seven meters back from the fire room yeah. is when you actually start to assume zero visibility. You have no idea where, yeah, we, where that room no. is. Then you can actually suppress that room as your stream comes around because water is actually going into the room the moment that, and again, it starts out like that, and then as you yeah, get perspective, it, 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 it yeah. starts opening up. Um, but it allows you to to begin that process without being right in, at in, that yeah. doorway. And I mean, but, and I, I fully agree with that. I mean, and yeah. again, going back to Swedish fire service, we've been taught to, not taught, but maybe a lot of unintentionally, basically go into basically standing on the fire, and then you put it on straight stream. Sure, like it's been it's been overly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, dramatized yeah, a little yeah. bit, yeah. And then, but uh, but it's like, well, it, it wasn't part of the like water mapping studies. You never, I never saw the data on it. But I know you tried it, like just hitting the soffit and sure. using the soffit to reflection. It didn't, it didn't reach the study, I didn't think. But yeah, it, bro- it broke it up very nicely. Yeah, and exactly. well, like, it, it deflects more into. I mean, it depends on where you put your objects in the yeah, room. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but yeah, but you're peacocking everywhere. Uh, right? uh, it's just yeah, spreading out. So and if I, I, I mean, if I, it, there's a lot of concern of what if I do a transitional attack and there's no ceiling. Well, one, if there's no ceiling, it means the fire's probably in the attic, in which case that might help putting your water up in the attic. Yeah. But two, if, if I'm, water's going in, especially on a second floor window, and I see that it's not having an impact, the first thing I'm doing is I'm pulling it back to the top of that window, yeah. and I'm hitting the top of that window and breaking it up into the room. I think too many times people, okay, I'm putting water into the room, and it might be going through the ceiling to the other side of the house yeah. and they're not seeing a change and they just stand there yeah, and don't try anything else. No. I mean, it's like, it's not doing what it should be doing. Yeah. I suggest you go to a plan B or C or D. Yeah. Um, but even the interior, that's like the, 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 when you talked about that doorway, who's like starting, when you're going down the hallway, yeah. starting to get a little bit of, you're starting, let's say especially take, if the tick works, it's not always it works, maybe it's too much steam or too much particulates and so on. But if you're starting to see that doorway, so see that first door frame, yeah. like now you have a vertical soffit where you can actually start balancing water in. Absolutely. Like, and, and yeah. that, the problem is you typically can never see it. No, I mean, you've got zero visibility. No, so, it, I mean. Well, that's again, what could we tick? And if the tick is more than tick, like even the ticks I see you use, like because they're very expensive. Sure. But like if you get a lot, like a really, really the state of the art now. Sure. They, they get, they get white outs too. Of course, it's well, too much stay and, and everything. And soot deposition yeah, and soot vapor deposition. and everything else. I mean, in many cases, it, I mean, you're spending more time wiping your face mask <laughs> and wiping the tick camera. It's like this yeah. the whole time. It, it, yeah, it definitely is a problem. But, yeah. but I mean, it, again, it goes back to how bad a fire is and, and what's burning. And, yeah. and, but, but ideal but world, you do, yes, absolutely. You could literally you could, bank see, yeah. off of that first door side. Wand. Yeah, you'd have no radiation <laughs> yeah, no. because you would have very little line of sight to the fire itself. You could have it coming from the upper yeah. gas layer but nothing from the fire itself um, yeah i mean if we could design the the you know everything you could possibly need <laughs> to know going to the seat of the fire then in many cases we would probably be using high pressure low flow 
because uh, we would know everything we need to know and we would know whether we were being successful or not. We would know if 25 yeah. gallons a minute was, was immediately enough. It's when you don't know and where the fire is. That that's a lot what you of need. Yeah, well, and, and that's what we talk about tacti tactical reserve. Like, well, yeah. you probably only need 50 liters a minute for like an apartment fire. That's probably what you need. Yeah. But since we there's so many variables and it's so hard to actually be effective with the water, you probably in the Swedish context in an apartment fire, you 150 liters per minute is way more than you need for 99, 95% of all the fires. Yeah. And Until then your floor plans start getting bigger yeah, so and you got bigger yeah, windows then, then and yeah, yeah. And, we're, we're and then it's in the structure and all that other and I think the, the most, the most I, but my problem is with the, like the, the discussion about having higher flows is that you, you know, like if, if it's, it, it, it's, 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 it's still like a stupid way. And I mean, really stupid. It's a stupid way to overcoming, um, competency issues or, or like it's, it's a very easy way to become to allow people to be sloppy sure like like well just use more more water water like we, we let's become we're inefficient so let's just use more water and overcome that problem but there's sure. also, always a boundary agree like this so so, so i, I I well, like no, you said, no there's, there's a penalty all. for everything right there's a pen penalty for everything i mean if we were still using one inch lines booster lines yeah um there is no doubt that you with the same amount of training as an inch and three quarter line that you could not move that one inch line faster than oh, that yeah. inch and three quarter line yeah, given i mean the same, there's given the same, the same amount of training yeah. and yeah. same, yeah. Uh, same uh, the guys that are really good at moving lines could be that much better at moving smaller lines oh well yeah absolutely. so uh, they could certainly be faster um but we we moved away from that and I can't tell you exactly why. I mean, the move from inch and a half to inch and three quarter lines is another fascinating thing. Um, yeah, that's like 45 from from 40 or something. So, something like that. Like, yeah, we had 38 when we moved to 42, but that does wasn't for interior attack. 42 would be like just a little bit below inch and three quarters. Uh, so we moved that because uh, we needed uh, like the uh, foam injectors to work. Okay, for, for yeah, to get the balance. Yeah, get yeah. the balance. So, so it wasn't about interior attack. Interesting. So that was a long time ago. Some departments still have 38, like the, which is inch and, inch and a half. Yeah. But otherwise, it's inch and three quarters. But again, that, doesn't, that wasn't because of fire. You got those people too? That's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, the world <laughs> is very similar. We have... <laughs> Like we have the whole spectrum exists in every country. There's small, there's small culture differences, but the people are the same. Yeah, the people are the same. Absolutely. Uh, no, but if we, because I can go back to that discussion about because there's always one thing too. There's, there's always discussion about well, we need more flow for safety, and I hate that argument. It's like like some some have a, like a regulation, and the United States have it too. Like well, you need at least this and this and this for interior attack. It's like a get out of jail free card. Like if you all, if you have this, you're safe. I don't know. I, I no, most people don't say it like that, but it's like sure. a sort of an implication that it's not safe to go in with less. Sure. And I would go like, what? It's no. It's. Yeah. I would just argue that it's like a false sense of reality. That I would love to go in with more water if I have manpower and I can support and everything, because it's awesome to be having that tactical reserve. But I can't use it as like I'm, I'm going to be safe. That's why I'm going to use more water. That's safe, why I you're, kind you're of find the, the Australian approach kind of fascinating, where they still have adjustable gallonage nozzles. Yeah. yeah. We used to have those. Yeah. Um, I don't know that anybody still uses them or they kind of got phased out, but if you go in, in their case, if you go in with a 125 gallons a minute as a peak and you can yeah. dial it all the way back to 25, um, they'll say that, well, I can put most fires out with 25, but I can go to 125 if I need it. Yeah. Uh, we could do that same thing, but we could go the opposite. We could go, all right, I want, I want 150, but I can also go down to 30. Um, and I think that would lead to more efficiency while not giving up the tactical reserve or the what ifs or, or whatever. Um, no, I think one, most people just left it to full, full. Because it's better. And well, because it, it, you, efficiency was not a concern, no, so no. you couldn't fail. Um, or if you did fail, I mean, I know a lot of places that um, 
if you give me an option of pulling an inch and three quarter or a two inch line, and they're both 200 feet long, I'm gonna pull the two inch every single time because there's a less chance that I'll get yelled at by the chief if the fire was too big and he says, why didn't you bring a bigger line? Yeah. There's a less chance I get yelled at because uh, I thought it was bigger, so I took the bigger line. And yeah, it's harder to advance. It might be heavier, slower, whatever the case is, because um, nothing's free. I mean, no, no decision comes without some sort of give and take. That's a lot of penalties for a bigger line, like yeah. especially if you go above like the inch and three quarters. Yeah. And if you go low pressure, I mean, I, you need like a, a person at every kink and so on. For and, sure. And if you have that manpower, I mean, again, that that uh, that, that argument, like I don't understand, but for yeah. like, I wrote on an engine company that typically had six people. Yeah. And if we're advancing one line, it was rare to have kinks in the line or a slow line advance because with five people yeah. or four people with their hands on the line, an officer that could have a hand on a line and a pump operator that's gonna make sure everything between the engine and the doorway yeah. is good as you're advancing. I mean, it, it could have been a one inch line yeah. or a three inch line. The mechanics for the most part um, with that many people are similar. Oh yeah, and, yeah. and it's and again, I, I, I can't argue with that. I, I can argue that it, it's, Depending if your people is there for EMS, which is a big, big, big uh, advantage of an American fire service. Like, because in Sweden you would say that, well, it's, if, if they're not needed, it's a cost for the taxpayer that, that you shouldn't be there. Like, if you could solve the same problem with less manpower, that you shouldn't be. Of course. But if you still, like, firefighters are still there because they need to be there because of EMS and so on. That's, like, I think that's. Why. Or high rise fire, or, high -rise or fire, industrial fire, or, yeah. But I mean, and I'm, I'm certainly not a, a, a positive of cutting down in fire service, but I am like doing less with more, regardless of the manpower you have. And again, go like that. If you have six pure person in, you would go like, well, I would like to have one at the door. I would like to have two inside. I would probably have one starting uh, getting the fan in place because I want to have fan yeah. as fast as possible as soon as we have some control or well, some preparing that that opposite vent point and searching on the outside where the fire is so a would be, absolutely I would rather have those people doing, doing other tasks, tasks. Yeah. Well, for that matter have a rescue team that does a rescue that rather than have four people advancing a hose line yeah in our case that six is followed up yeah, by 40 yeah, more yeah, that are yeah, doing all yeah, those that, things that yeah doesn't really matter again yeah and that is one really important important point of context yeah it's still a sequence you still have to decide like what's the most important absolutely you, you always have one engine arriving first yeah. so whatever the, the some number of people are there by themselves to yeah. get started and I mean that's one thing that I think our department really prided itself on was really robust riding position assignments yeah. and a lot of training and people knew what they were what was expected of them and what they were no words were spoken in many cases other than calling out of what hose line the officer wanted other than that everything just started happening and I mean that's that was our system that's how we worked everybody knew what they were responsible for would uh you know you know like take a scenario first uh seeing a residential house um, um unknown if people are inside like mm -hmm. it's no confirmed but it's unknown it might be people inside yep. like a, sure. and we've got a fire in a bedroom on the back side mm -hmm. uh it's not it's not it's not uh obviously venting out a window so so it, like it's not obvious that it's very fast to do a transitional let's say you might even know where it is it's just a you know arrived at a, at a black yeah. box yeah but you might indicate that it's on the back side or someone said it so let's let's say the scenario would that your department now uh, well would your department now or i don't know you're still with that department as a volunteer no or no you're not no. Uh, life member like oh uh, yeah honorary member honorary would you think that department right now would go for first 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 assignment would they go for search or would they go for fire attack like well, if if like you have to sequence, what's the first job? I know the fire attack. Then we go fire attack. Yeah, they, I mean through the front door of the hose line. Yeah, and then and then second crew, second whatever we arrives, then would for instance do rescue. And well, it depends if we had if we had six people on that first engine, the people that are behind the nozzle person advancing line would also be searching off of the hose line. But the primary role to support the line movement. Line second, movement. The secondary role of searching. Correct. Okay, but again, that would be. A and then there's truck companies coming. Oh yeah. It's, yeah, absolutely. Yep. 
Well, and yeah. remember, you're in, you're in a tight spot. You're you're in a you're in a tight area, so you can advance line. And I mean, you're a tall guy. I'm a tall guy. Just oh, simply see, stretching oh, yeah. out, so you're good, yeah. sweeping a good portion of yeah. that path to to where you're going. But still, it's a mental I think, and I fully support. Like I think, fire attack is the most important tool we have for rescue. Sure, absolutely. Like, unless, like, oh, I know it's the person is first room to the right. Like if you get a yeah. reported here or something, it's clear indication. Obvious like, rescues versus obvious, yeah. unknown. Yeah, you unknown rescues. Like the first, because as soon as we get control of fire, we can massively ventilate the structure. And that's the, that's what we've been preaching with and seeing with the research yeah. is that I mean, the moment you have the upper hand. Don't hold back on that ventilation because you've got to get the crap out. I mean, it, if you're relying on the door you came in through to get all the stuff out, I don't know. make all the glass go away. I mean, it's uh, it's one of those things where it's, yeah, you, then you start talking efficiency of, oh, I broke windows versus not break or opening windows and things like that. I mean, if you still have unknown, unconfirmed whether you can complete the search or not, yeah. and increase visibility will allow you to do that faster. The glass has got to go. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I, but I would say, one well, also, would you agree on this one? I, I don't know if you had it. I think you probably had in considerations, but or maybe it's from the dad. Died. Have you read any of them? I've glanced at them. Okay, just checking. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, but you see a lot of stuff because generally, if if if, if you see the measurements in in the airstream, mm -hmm. you would see that. Uh, like the concentration of carbon monoxide and, and, and hydrogen cyanide goes down way much faster than visibility improves. Would you see? Would you, would you say that that's the case? If you look at like video cameras and by, by goes down, meaning that you oh that reduces. Okay, it gets worse. No, the well in the airstream. Well, so you, you got you got some suppressant on the fire. Yeah. Start to ventilate now within the airstream going to the fire. Correct. You you would you would get lower uh, lower amounts of car uh, hydro uh, well, <laughs> carbon monoxide. It would get better for the victim. It would get better for the victim. Yes. But, but, yeah. But yes. My, my my question was my my point was was that that uh, the levels of toxic gases reduce as much faster than you gain visibility, meaning that you you might still have a very hard to search environment visibility wise, but the environment the people are. Is becoming gradually better and better. For sure. Because, yeah. because no, one, no one doubt. Thing, one thing that that was so important is because one of the arguments I have, or one of the things we have, is that when, when, you, when you do like a fire attack and you start ventilation, if you don't have those measurements, you kind of go like, well, it still takes like a couple of minutes before you start have visibility. Like it's not supporting search visibility wise that fast. It's also. No, not that fast, but it it's is fast. supporting it's... victim survivability that yes. fast. Well, depending on where they are. Depend yeah. So if they're on the ground, yeah. absolutely. It's an upside down bathtub. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's it starts at the bottom and yeah. begins to work its way up. It goes faster in the flow path than it does yeah. outside the flow path. But ultimately, it's lifting from the ground up. So you could have a person on a bed on the other side of the house that is being exposed worse than someone next to the fire room on the floor simply because their elevation off the ground. So if you start prioritizing that, that search in that case, the person in more danger at that time is the person on the bed three, three feet above the ground than the person on the ground. What do you, like I've never I never taught this or never even thought about this because I, because I haven't I haven't really delved into search patterns. I mm -hmm. you know like that's one of the things that we've been doing for 30 years. Like sure. Americans start close to the fire search back. Typical European start with right hand or left hand search. We go through the door and whatever happens happens. But like that's the two main schools there is. I would I'd generalize it. Yeah. And then you have like large room search, different techniques, how you sweep the floor and so on. But 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 going in there, I've never I never thought about heck, having a a search pattern where you go like, well, I'll search. The I haven't I haven't thought about it. High to low. You search like high low, high fast, and then you go like like you do a low like if I do a certain room, I go like a yeah. fast high search, and then I do a low search just because of that priority. I don't know if that makes any sense. No, that's, I mean, that's what we, that's question. a tactical consideration that we discuss is that, that searching near the fire 
isn't necessarily the best from a uh, who needs the help the fastest perspective. So if you well, if I, I did bedrooms, yeah, I don't expect someone to be on the kitchen counter. <laughs> so if yeah, if yeah. you go to a bedroom, it's going to be much worse for that person on the bed right, than on yeah. the floor. Yeah. And top bunk much worse than bottom bunk much worse than floor. Does it matter? You can search it really fast. You're in there. But I think consideration should be given to what level you find the person and then what level you put them at to remove them.